Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about graphs of inverse trigonometric functions, which are say sine inverse x, cos inverse x. Now these are just inverse functions of the already known trigonometric functions. Say y is equal to sine x. Now we know for y is equal to sine x, it will take in the value pi by 4 to give out the value 1 by root 2 because sine of pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Whereas its inverse function, say y is equal to sine inverse x, will take in the value 1 by root 2 and give out the value pi by 4. Which in general sense means that if there is any point a, comma b satisfying y is equal to sine x, then there must be a point b, comma a which should satisfy y is equal to sine inverse x. And by knowing this and uh, knowing the curve of y is equal to sine x, we'll be trying to plot the curve of y is equal to sine inverse x. So let's see. So this right here is the curve of y is equal to sine x. Now let's start plotting the points. For 0, 0, sine x, we'll have 0, 0 for sine inverse x. And let's write all the points on a table. So we get something like this. Uh, for minus pi by 2, comma, minus 1, we'll be getting the point minus 1, comma, minus pi by 2. So that's here. For pi by 2, comma, 1, we'll get 1, comma, pi by 2. That's here. And for pi comma 0 will be getting 0 comma pi and for minus pi comma 0 will be getting 0 comma minus pi and now all we have to do is just connect these dots to get the curve so let's do that this is a nice curve that we got but wait a second why did i draw it like this why did i draw it like a curve why can't i simply draw it something like this a linear okay let's think about it for that, actually let's think about the points a, b and b, a. So seeing the points, we know that these points a, b and b, a are just going to be reflections about the line y is equal to x. And if we are saying that for sine x, if every point is of the form a, b, then for sine inverse x, every point is going to be of the form b, a, then by virtue of this property, it simply means that the entire curve sine x and the entire curve sine inverse x are just going to be reflections about the line y is equal to x. Now using this, it makes our job really easy. So all we have to do now is construct the line y is equal to x and reflect the curve y is equal to sine x while keeping in mind the already noted points that we had. So let's do that. We have y is equal to sine x. We have drawn the line y is equal to x right here. and We've already got the points. Let's label these points. So we have 0, minus pi, 0, pi, and 0, 0. And these two points are 1, pi by 2 and minus 1, minus pi by 2. Now let's try to reflect the curve y is equal to sine x about the line y is equal to x. Now by reflecting, what I mean is, say 1, pi by 2 is the reflection of pi by 2, comma 1 about the line y is equal to x. What it means is, that both of these points are going to be equidistant from the line y is equal to x and also the line joining them must be perpendicular to the line y is equal to x and say we construct such a line something like this from here to here and from minus pi minus 1 comma minus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 comma minus 1 now what is essentially doing is they are becoming our guiding lines so when just this point. Let's also try having this guiding lines for any random points. Say something like this. Now, with the already known points that we had, we also got the additional information because this point and this point is also going to line on the curve y is equal to sine inverse x. Similarly, this point and this point is also going to lie on the curve sine inverse x. So, along with the already known points, we also understand how the structure of the curve is going to look like now because sine inverse x is going to pass through all of these points and also all of the points that we already know so let's try plotting it now so we get a curve something like this now this is a beautiful curve and it makes sense why this is a curve and not just the linear ones that we were questioning but hold on wait a second in the pursuit of trying to plot y is equal to sine inverse x, I think we left out a really fundamental question here. That is, that is this even a function? And why this doubt is coming, let's see it very clearly 
on this y is equal to sin inverse curve only. So we have our curve, the one that we made right now, y is equal to sin inverse x. And for something to be a function, a basic precondition that has to be met is that 1x should only satisfy one unique f of x. That is, one input should only give out one output. And that is very conveniently tested in a curve by the vertical line test, which says that if we draw any vertical line to the curve, it should cut the curve in only one point. Whereas our more, most prominent vertical line, which is the y-axis itself, is cutting the curve in three points, as you can see here, here, and here. So we can be definite that the one that we have constructed right now is not a function. However, we can make this a function simply by restricting its range. And now we have to think, how should we restrict the curve somehow that if we pass any vertical line to it, it will only cut it once. So one such idea can be this. y is equal to minus pi by 2 and y is equal to pi by 2. If we restrict the curve between these two barriers, and now let's try putting any vertical line here to see if it is actually cutting the curve in only one point or not. So we can get rid of the other parts of the curve. And now let's put a vertical line, something like this. And we can clearly see that any such line, any such vertical line, if I'm putting here, it will only cut the curve at one point. So now we got a function by restricting the range to minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. And this restricted range is called the principal branch. So our principal branch is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And in this branch, y is equal to sine inverse x is a function. And this is the function that is constructed. Now one may question, why just this? Why, why only for minus pi by 2 to pi by 2? Can we not also consider another branch, say pi by 2 comma 3 pi by 2? Let's look at that. So we have y is equal to sine inverse x and we have already got a curve from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Now let's think about the curve from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. So let's see here, we've already got the points plotted. It's from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. The points are somewhere going to be 1 comma pi by 2, 0 comma pi and minus 1 comma 3 pi by 2. And by the same exercise that we did just now, let's try plotting uh, the curve. So we'll get something like this. And you can again see this itself is also a function. Any vertical line from anywhere will only cut this curve at one point. So the question is, why are we not considering this? And if we have that argument in our mind, another question that will surely pop up is that why just this? Why can't it just be pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2? And because of this question itself, that is why we fixed a principal branch. Because if it's so many ranges that we can consider, which range should we choose? And for that, by convention, we fix the principal branch to be between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And if our question is that, why did we choose this by convention? So if it were up to you and me, and we were to choose between this curve and this curve, I think what makes sense for minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 is simply that it is first centered around origin. And it is so much aesthetic to look at. And that's why by convention, we fix this. Whereas, if I get to know anything more about this, we'll definitely have another class to look at it again. But now, the fact of the matter is, we fixed the principal branch, we've understood why we have not considered anything else, and on that principal branch, we've also successfully plotted y is equal to sine inverse x. So let's see the curve in all its glory. So we have our points, let's make a curve. And this goes from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Also talking about the domain and range. So it will take in the value of minus 1, comma 1. Whereas it will give out the values between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So its domain is minus 1 to 1, both included. And its range is going to be minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, both included. And that's all for today. Thank you.